Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I wanted to continue our discussion on Dashware and talk a little bit about how to use custom data profiles in Dashware. In other words, how can I take data that was logged by some other device either in a CSV or a tab delineated or some other type of file format which might not be natively supported by Dashware and how can I modify Dashware's data profile so it can understand that information and still import it and use it to drive uh, gauges and dials and readouts within in Dashware. So like I said, this is a continuation of our video series. So uh, I hope you've taken the time to watch these two previous videos talking about getting started with Dashware, how projects work, things like that in this first video, as well as our second video where we talked a little bit about how the gauges work, how to modify them, um, how to clone them, how to make new gauges, etc. We're going to be building off some of these ideas uh, today. So if you haven't seen these two videos already, please take a moment to uh, find these on the channel. I will leave links to these in the description and watch these two first because I think they'll give you a little bit of context and help set the stage of what we're trying to do today. All right, so in the previous videos, we saw that Dashware is very good at importing data that is generated by a quote unquote standard source. So for example, like a Garmin smartwatch or uh, other types of standard data logging systems where they've already defined a schema and Dashware understands how that information should be brought in to Dashware and then mapped to certain gauges. Now, what I wanna talk about today is what if you have another device? So for example, I've got this device I'm showing right here. In fact, I made a completely separate video on this. This is a little Arduino based GPS and temperature logging system that I actually used with some of our uh, science club kids and we launched a high altitude weather balloon um, and logged a bunch of information using this system so obviously it is not um, recording data in a standardized format and Dashware has probably never ever seen this data before long story short what this system here has is it records a bunch of different parameters and I was just uh, you know I just wrote this to a CSV effectively so we get things like the date, uh, the GPS date, the GPS time, the lat long altitude from the GPS. We get the number of GPS, a uh, number of satellites that are currently locked, as well as the GPS horizontal dilution of precision, as well as two temperatures. So I'm reading an external temperature because I'm interested in seeing how cold it gets as we launch this balloon up into the stratosphere. And I also have a second temperature sensor inside the payload box so we can maintain and read uh, how warm it is inside. Um, in addition, it also measures uh, speed from the GPS and then I've actually got a couple of post-processing scripts that add some signals for example like we calculate the uh, the filtered version of vertical speed so long story short we've got this data and now I want to get it into Dashware in some format all right, so before we get into Dashware, um, I actually wanted to pull up MATLAB just to look at the data that I'm talking about and just so we can get a feel for what the data set sort of looks like. So let me just run this script. So um, I'll plot up this data and we can take a look at it. Uh, let me pull this over, uh, popped up on another screen. So here it is. So here's uh, what it looked like. So we launched our high altitude balloon down here on the Columbia River and it floated. Uh, it actually went really high. I think around like 81,000 feet. It was floating and ascending and then it popped here and then it actually ended up descending pretty darn quickly and surprisingly ended up at the Afreda um, Regional uh, Airport <laughs> of all places. That's where it landed. So this is what the latitude and longitude of the trajectory looked like. Also, like we said, we're recording a whole bunch of other signals as well like the temperature so you can see here that temperature sensor a which was the outside air temperature of the balloon it got pretty darn cold I mean look at this in Fahrenheit um, it got all the way down to you as we were as, this, uh, ascending look at that negative 32 degrees Fahrenheit um, and actually geez even here like at the um, I think this is the descent portion yeah negative 45 that's kind of interesting but uh, the inside stayed pretty warm you can see temperature sensor B B, which was the interior temperature sensor, which is the orange line, that only got to about freezing, I think, um, throughout the uh, throughout the mission. Um, as you can see, we had a good number of satellites during the entire mission, except right here. So actually, you can see when the balloon popped, that's where the temperature started um, changing quite significantly. I think this is where the balloon popped and the payload started tumbling so we actually lost GPS lock you can see here that the number of GPS goes down to zero so in this time period we actually lost communication or lost a GPS lock so that's why some of these signals look a little bit funny but you can see that yeah it was it was it was trucking look at the speed um, 
as it was ascending, you know, it's going 20, 30 miles an hour as we were going up. And like we said earlier, the altitude is what's really impressive about this is, look at this, the altitude got all the way up to, yeah, like about 80,000 feet when uh, the balloon burst. Um, here, we, we are calculating the vertical speed. The vertical speed is a little bit washed out. I will, uh, uh, I'll call that to your attention because this will matter later when we bring this into Dashware. You can see that it's got, during uh, the portion where we lost GPS, this vertical speed calculation is not very accurate. So I think it's probably better to kind of zoom in and look at this um, in a more reasonable fashion. So let me just zoom in to this kind of region. And you can kind of see that the vertical speed was you know, as we are ascending, I don't know, what is this? Oops, let me change my tool here. But uh, the vertical speed was, you know, reasonable uh, as we are ascending, I don't know, in the neighborhood of, yeah, 12 to 15 feet per second. And then when it dropped, actually, I kind of think the parachute didn't deploy or didn't fully deploy because you can see it was dropping much faster than we anticipated. Almost 30 feet per second is, is how fast it was coming down. Um, but yeah, that's that's what the data set looks like, right? So we have all of this in MATLAB, and what I can easily do now in MATLAB is I can print all of this data out to like a CSV file, which we can hopefully ingest into Dashware. So that's where I think we need to pause now and ask ourselves, how should I write this out to a uh, CSV file so it's easily consumable by Dashware? Because right now, like I said, it's all in MATLAB and the world is our oyster. We can manipulate the data however we want, but let's think a little bit here. And actually we should go look at how does a normal CSV or another type of data file get imported into Dashware? All right, so in the previous two videos, we looked at an example of where I took data from my Garmin watch, right? And I downloaded the file that the Garmin watch created, right? It's this .fit file or this .fit file. And we imported that into Dashware. And we saw that what happens when uh, Dashware imports this, this is a binary file like we talked about earlier, right? If you open this up and you try to look at this in Notepad, it looks like gobbledygook, right? Because it's a binary file. But Dashware is able to open it up, parse it, and actually they write a CSV file uh, to the project directory, uh, wherever you're making your project. So in this case, this is the exact same project we looked at in the previous two videos. So here's the CSV file that is associated with this .fit file. So maybe what would be useful actually is, let's take a look at this and we can see that all they're doing is they write two header lines. So one header line, it just kind of talks about what this is. So it's a Dashware fit CSV file, right? So basically this is the CSV file that was created by Dashware based on this .fit file. And then the second line is just the CSV of basically headers, right? So it's something called time. And we can see time is basically uh, year, month, day, and then hour, minute, second. And this is all in UTC time. Okay, so that's what they, they stick in this first column. And then they start listing off all this other critical information like longitude, latitude, altitude, distance, speed, grade, heart rate, right, cadence, power, all this stuff that is specific to um, uh, athletic exercise activity, right, is what is captured in that fit file. And you can see my watch doesn't capture some of these. A lot of these are blank, right? Um, but what I'm getting at is, you know what? Why uh, d don't change it, right? If it's already working, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this looks like a really good scheme of how to um, uh, basically write out a CSV file that hopefully we can import into Dashware. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this file format and this CSV format, and basically instead of populating this using data collected from my Garmin watch, I'm going to write a little MATLAB script that's going to take all of this data that we just looked at, right, um, that from our, uh, our custom data logger, and I'm going to try to make it fit as close to this format as possible. So obviously, we're not going to have things like heart rate, cadence, power, etc. Um, and instead of just one temperature here, we're going to have a temperature A and a temperature B. Right, so there's going to be differences, but long story short, if we follow this format, we should hopefully have a reasonable uh, chance of success of importing this into Dashware. So that's what I've done in this other MATLAB script. Let me bring that up just to kind of take a look at this. So all I've done here is I've basically just packaged all of this data up in a similar format to what we just saw. So if I run this script, this is going to generate a file which looks very similar 
to the, uh, the, the dashboard generated CSV file. So here it is. So it created this file. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Okay, let me go ahead and do that. And let me actually move this to another view. Okay, so whoops. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to clone that. I wanted to look at it like this. Okay, here we go. So let me let me maximize this. So here on the left, this is what Dashware created um, using this fit uh, file format and fit data profile, right? So it recognizes if a, if data comes in from a Garmin watch or a fit file, it can basically parse it and write it to a CSV like this. And over here, I have this Dashware LUM CSV file, which is for my GPS logger. And as you can see, it looks very, very similar. It's just the headers are a little bit different. Like we said, we've got two temperatures and I also am calc uh, or writing out the number of satellites that are locked. And I'm also writing out the vertical speed that, uh, we calculated. So again, all that information is now in this CSV file. So the trick now is how can we get Dashware to recognize this right file? It already knows how to recognize this left file. So really the game plan is probably how can we modify the data profile for this left file in Dashware and make it understand the data format in the right file? So to do that, let's go ahead and fire up Dashware. All right, so we've got Dashware fired up. Let's go ahead and start a new project. Okay, and let me bring this dialog down so we can see what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this, I don't know, how about Dashware, or how about, how about um, custom data profile example okay and again let's use a template of sure this GoPro Imperial is probably fine um, uh, so let's go ahead and use this I think we've been using it in the past so all right let's go ahead and do that there we go okay so that is created and now let me pull up a um, instance of my file explorer just so we can take a look at um, where that put it right here dashboard demo so here it is here's our Here's our project uh, folder. So now what I want to do is let's add some uh, artifacts uh, here. So for example, let's go ahead and first go and add uh, the video file of our launch. So again, if you look at this, um, I've just blurred out this a little bit for uh, privacy's sake, but this is basically a video of the launch of our balloon uh, where it was carrying this data logger. So as you can see, it's just going to take off Great, okay. So this is looking awesome and this is what we want to import into Dashware. So let's go ahead and do that right now. That should be pretty easy. So we're gonna come over here and click plus on the video and here it is, that's the one we just did. And yep, here it goes. So now the thing that's interesting is we want to now drive all of this with a custom data file. So again, let's go ahead, open our uh, our project folder here and now what I'm gonna do is I want to grab that MATLAB generated CSV file so here's the CSV file that we just created this is the custom CSV file with our custom set of data so let me go ahead and paste that inside so again this is that CSV file we were just looking at uh, over here well I guess whoops now I've got multiple instances of it sorry let, let me let me close everything Actually, let me close everything in Notepad++ just so we can start from scratch, okay? So, uh, all right, here it is. So here is the CSV file, okay? And, yep, it's the Dashware LUM CSV file with our two temperature sensors, number of satellites, vertical speed, all that kind of information. So here it is. Now, the issue now is I can't just import this right away because Dashware doesn't understand how to parse that file. So what we need to do is we need to add what's called a data profile so it knows how to consume that custom file. So to do that, we're gonna come up here to file and say edit data profiles, okay? And what that's gonna do is you're gonna bring up this dialog box, okay? And as you can see, it has all of these are the, the types of data files that Dashware automatically understands how to parse. So, you know, GPXs, uh, GoPros, um, uh, TCX files, all that stuff. Now, what I want to do, again, in the interest of just, you know, using something that's already working, we saw in the previous two videos that this fit file 
uh, works pretty well. It's pretty close to what we want. And in fact, that's how we designed creating our custom CSV file is modeled after this fit file. So what we should do is actually, let's take this one and this is a read only profile um, just so we can't edit it. Just for giggles, what I will show you is where Dashware stores all of these profiles is if you go into your standard location of where Dashware stores, we looked earlier, we saw that here's where it stores all of the gauges, right? It's usually in your documents folder, Dashware, wherever it was during install, it decided to add this. This is all of the gauges, but also in this folder called data profiles, this is where all of these different data profiles are located, right? So there's this one right here, this fit, um, data profile that is right now set to read only. And now what I want to do is let's actually clone this. So if you click on this button, you'll basically be able to basically copy it. And then we're going to take that copy and modify it slightly. So let's click on this button. That's going to bring up this other little window here. Let's go ahead and call this the LUM GPS logger profile. Okay. And I'll say, okay. And now that should have showed up, whoopsie, where did I, uh, sorry, I opened the wrong um, folder, sorry, I got too many windows open, let me close that one, uh, here it is, uh, here, right, so it created this one in our Dashware data profile, so we've now we've got this new data profile that we can start uh, messing with effectively to uh, get it so it can understand our type of data. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is let's open up the data file that we're using as an example. So I'm going to click on this open data file and here is that CSV that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. All right. And now a couple of things that we're going to need to do. Uh, first of all, we are going to need to uh, mark uh, which one of these is the header line. So again, there are multiple header lines. So this first header line is telling us, uh, you know, just some general information. It's really this second header line right here, which has all of the headers, right? It's time, comma, longitude in degrees, comma, latitude. I, I guess I shouldn't say in degrees. I should just say this is a unique string that we're going to use. It's latitude, space, bracket, D, E, G, N, bracket, right? Again, you could, these could be anything depending on how your system decides to write out the header line. You might just have some unique string up here, but really, um, this is going to basically tell dash where the headers are in this order. It's this item, comma, this item, comma, this item, comma, this item, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and then you may or may not have to click on the, uh, a mark header line. Like it might look like this when you start off. But what you're going to want to do is click on this header line and then click on mark header line and that should turn green. Okay. So now this is telling us this is where Dashware thinks the, the header line is located, right? Similarly, you, now we are going to have to mark where the data starts. And again, this is already done. Um, I don't know if Dashware was smart. Um, it might look like this. It might just all be white for you. So what you need to do is you need to click on the first line, which is where the data starts, and you're going to have to click on Mark Data Start. So I'm going to click like that, and then it shows in yellow where all of the data rows are located, right? And again, this doesn't show the entire file. This is only 100 lines of the file. The file is much longer. But this has basically got this thing set up um, for the most part, okay? So, uh, let's see. I'm going to just hit apply down here to sort of save this. Okay, now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start over here in this calculator department. So this calculator department is going to help take some of this information and then sort of create intermediate variables. So, for example, like this first line here, you can almost read this as like code where... Dashware is saying, okay, I'm going to set up a linear interpolator. So I will take basically information in this column, which is called longitude space bracket DEG and bracket, right? And I'm going to create a variable, which is longitude underscore I for probably interpolated. That's probably how they set up this uh, scheme, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what we might want to do first, you can see that this is basically doing uh, effectively like code uh, in this case. So it's it's basically reading in a lot of this information from these columns and creating these variables with the underscore I, which is basically telling you it's an interpolated version. The reason it's interpolated is because Dashware, one piece of information that is absolutely critical to it is it needs to know the time 
that's elapsed during this uh, this mission or in this file. So it can basically know what the state of the gauge is at any given time uh, for your overlay. So that's what it's going to use this first column for. Um, so this time you see is is kind of complicated. And I think if we start going through here, um, you'll see that basically that's what it's doing, right? It's interpolating values at the given time and it's making all of these intermediate variables and then it's doing things like converting things. So it's taking this interpolated value of longitude, right? And it's converting it from degrees to X and Y uh, effectively, right? So there's conversions, there's speed conversions, there's distance conversions. So there's averaging, there's all this kind of stuff that seems to be uh, happening um, in this section of the bottom left, right? In this calculators and converters section, okay? So the first thing I think we should do is maybe let's start from the top of this and let's clean this up and basically delete things that are no longer uh, relevant. So for example, in our file, we don't have any idea about the percentage of grade, right? That's not logged in our, in our data file. So this is doing a whole bunch of nothing. So I should delete this line and then we're going to understand that that also is going to delete this variable grade underscore i space bracket percent end bracket, right? This variable is going to be deleted. So anything downstream is also going to need to be deleted uh, as we get through this. So again, let's just go through this and start from the top and see, do we keep it or do we burn it, burn it down, right? So we need longitude, latitude, those should all be fine, altitude. Um, distance. Uh, we don't have a distance, right? There's, uh, if you look up here, there's nothing about distance. So we can, we can get rid of distance. How about speed? Um, speed we do have, right? So let's keep that. Grade we don't have. Let's get rid of that. Heart rate, let's get rid of that. Cadence, we'll get rid of that. Power, we don't need that. Power balance, not, nope, that's not a thing in our system. Um, relative resistance, that doesn't matter. Okay, temperature, This we'll, let's come back to this, okay? We're gonna have to modify this in a second, but for right now, let's just go through and clean up this file. Okay, we're gonna keep this because the longitude I variable was created up here, so we still are able to make the conversion in this line of code, so let's keep that. Same thing with the speed, right? The speed I is created, so we can convert this speed to any of these different values that we want. So let's uh, let's keep going, scroll down. Okay, all these distances can now go away, right? So we're not gonna need that, or we're not gonna be able to ha use it, in fact, because this distance I variable is not created. Altitude will be there. Okay, now this one is critical. So the time is uh, what we need for Dashware to be able to understand the linear time elapsed. So we absolutely got to keep that one. We're going to keep the altitude. Let's, uh, oh, we don't need this distance one, right? We can get rid of that. Okay. Um, okay. This thing, again, this is uh, the vertical speed. Um, Let's come back to this actually in a second. Uh, let's leave this because what we're going to want to do is we're going to, this line is basically telling us what they did earlier is they were, they're, they're actually computing vertical speed based on a change in altitude and a change in time. So this could still be valid, right? Uh, this would still work, but Ultimately, what we actually want to do is we want to overwrite how Dashware is getting the raw vertical speed because we actually computed that over in MATLAB and that is part of our data file. So actually, we're going to want to come back to this and we're going to uh, revisit this in a couple of minutes. So I'll tell you what, leave this here for now and we'll, we'll modify this later. Um, same thing, once we modify this, all of this calculation should still flow through, right? Because we'll be able to average it based on this value that is that is defined up here, okay? So anyway, um, this is still valid, still valid, still valid, still valid. Okay, let's keep going. The grade is gone. We don't want that. Lap summary stuff. Um, I guess we can still, we, we will have speed, so we could keep all of this, I suppose. Let's keep this, but we, yeah, we don't want power. Power is gone. Don't need power. Um, heading, sure, we can keep that. Uh, yeah, raw heading, that's okay. Acceleration. Um, yeah, I really don't care too much about acceleration, but I guess we can use it because speed and heading should be computed, so let's keep that. Um, we'll keep this, keep this. Uh, yep, we can keep all those. Lap summary calculator. Uh, yeah, we should be able to keep them. That's fine, these variables should be defined. This should be okay. Um, 
Okay, uh, distance convert, total ascent. I don't think we have this. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of total uh, descent. Sure, we can get rid of this. Uh, altitude minimum. Um, where did that actually get defined? I'm actually kind of curious now. Was that actually up here somewhere? Um, let's keep that for now. Okay, yeah, the grade, let's get rid of that. Grade, we'll get rid of that. Averaging, okay, we don't need that, don't need that. Okay, all right, this is uh, pretty close. Okay, let's go ahead and hit apply. Um, okay, now let's take some next steps. All right, so we cleaned up all the unnecessary signals and calculations here in the calculator slash converter. So now let's move over to the column mapping. So column mappings is going to take the variables that are computed over here and basically uh, put those into signals that can be selected and used to drive different gauges. Okay, so again, we need to just go through this and clean this up and let's just remove the ones that are no longer being computed over here on the left. Okay, so again, time, we absolutely need that. In fact, if you notice here, this says it's required. So this is the one uh, column that absolutely has to ha be present uh, for this to function. So we, yeah, let's keep going. So we need latitude, longitude, yeah, GPS X, that was still okay. Um, I think the distance, uh, I can't remember, did, did we delete the distance? I can't remember if we kept that or not. Um, Sorry, I was a little bit lax in uh, checking for that. Um, yeah, you know what? Let, let's keep it. I don't. Th it's, it shouldn't hurt us. We should be able to just make sure we're not using gauges. I don't think we're going to use any gauges that use those anyway. Okay, speeds. Those are all being calculated. Yeah, a lot of these are being calculated. The vertical speed, we said we're going to deal with that in a second. But yeah, heart rate is not needed anymore. So let's get rid of heart rate. Get rid of cadence. Get rid of power. Get rid of calculated grade. Okay. Okay, we can keep these things about the speed. Um, yeah, power, we don't have that information. Lap power we can get rid of. Max lap power we can get rid of. Yeah, all this stuff we can get rid of. Okay, let's keep some of this. Keep some of this. Okay, and then get rid of this power balance and get rid of this power balance here. Okay, so again, let's hit apply to save all this. This is looking pretty good. So now, um, we cleaned it up, but what we need to do is let's start addressing, so for example, this issue where there's two temperatures now. There's a temperature A and a temperature B. And right now, if you come over here and look at the calculator, we are actually only looking for something called temperature space C. Where we need to be looking for something called temperature A and temperature B. So let's do that now. All right, so what we're going to need to do is let's modify this linear interpolator here. So I'm going to click on it and then click on this modify or edit button. And we end up with this dialog. And now what we need to do is the input value. Let's just modify this to be temperature A. So I'll click on this drop down. I'll click temperature A. And now the output value, I can call this whatever we want. Let's call it temperature A underscore interpolated. Okay, so let's hit OK. So now when it comes down to this line of code, it should read in that column and create a variable called temperature A underscore I. So what we also need to do is let's go downstream and we got to look through this and see are there other places where we were using temperature underscore I and that we now need to update to temperature A underscore I. So I think we just scroll down. I know there was stuff about temperature um, here. Where was it? Come, aha, down here. Here we go. So this temperature converter, let's go ahead and also edit this thing. So now the input temperature is, it should be this temperature A underscore I. So let me scroll around. Let me see if we can find it. Where is it? Um, I always have a hard time staring at this on the fly. Let, uh, here it is. Temperature A underscore I. Okay. So this is the Celsius version. So we are going to now output this and let's again change this to maybe temperature A um, uh, in Fahrenheit. And we're going to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's great. Okay, so now this calculator should be updated to create both a temperature A underscore I in Celsius and then a temperature A in Fahrenheit. So th those two variables should be there, so to speak. So now let's come over here to the column mapping and we'll do the same thing. We got to update this and find the places where it's using temperature and modify it appropriately, like, aha, right here. So this guy, temperature I, this is being mapped to the environmental air temperature. So again, let's modify this. 
and then I click on that, that brings up this dialog. And what we have to do is we have to change this, right? There's no longer something called temperature underscore I, there's something called temperature A underscore I in Celsius. So this is going to get mapped to the air temperature, the environmental air temperature, okay? So let's click OK for that. And then same thing, we need to modify this one down here. So I'll modify this. And this now needs to be, it's not temperature anymore, it is temperature A, where is it? Uh, oh boy, where did it go? Uh, it's this thing down here, temperature A, F. Why do I always, I can't read these things. I wish they would do this thing um, in a little bit more. Ah, here, it's all the way at the bottom, of course. All right, temperature A, F, right? Okay, and then that is going to get mapped to the environment, yeah, the air temperature in Fahrenheit. Let's do that, okay? Okay, so there we go, all right? So now I think we've updated temperature sensor A. Now, let's do the same thing for temperature sensor B. So actually what we're gonna do is let's create uh, another linear interpolator, which is now going to read in temperature B's column. So to do that, we're gonna click on the add new calculator button. This brings up this dialog box, and we can pick what type of um, calculator that we're gonna use. We're gonna use a linear interpolator and click add. And now the input value for this is going to be temperature B, right? It's this in Celsius. And what we want this to be is, oh shucks, I should have remembered, what did we call that? Uh, nuts. Um, Hold on, let, let me cancel this. Sorry, we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna, let me scroll up so where we can see everything in one place. Uh, okay, right here. We're trying to emulate this line right here. So again, let's do this again. Let's click on add new um, item, linear interpolator, add. And then we are now going to want temperature B coming in. And as you can see earlier, we were doing that and then we read it in and we created a variable called temperature B underscore I C. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. So let's call this temperature B underscore I in Celsius. Okay. All right. And we'll hit okay. And that should put this way down here at the bottom. Okay. Now what we can do is let's move this up. Uh, oops. And I think I created this extra one. Sorry. Let me delete this one. Let me move this one. We're going to want to move this up to be in a similar position as the other. So I'm gonna click up a whole bunch and see if I can find it. Uh, okay, that's yeah, right here still. Okay, so we wanna move this up, up a little bit more where we need this. Da, 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 da. I think it's way up here. Ah, uh, there it is, okay, right? Good, so now we've got temperature A being read into this variable, temperature B in Celsius being read into this variable, so that's great. Now let's do um, this similar operation, this temperature converter. So again, let's hit a new calculator, and this is going to be a temperature converter. Hit add, and then the input temperature is going to be uh, temperature B interpolated, this one. And the output temperature is going to be uh, another variable called temperature B in Fahrenheit. And we need to go actually the other way around. We're going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, right? Hit OK. Great. So now I think we have this set up over here in the calculator side. Now let's get the column mapping on this side to match these two, or, or at least not match, but to emulate. So to add a column mapping, I'm going to hit plus sign here. And the input data column, let's do the, uh, the Celsius version first. So temperature uh, B interpolated in Celsius. Yes, that is the input, right? And now what that is going to map to is again, this is going to be an environment, but now instead of air temperature, what temperature B is supposed to be the inside temperature of the payload box. So I guess let's call it track temperature. That seems to be the, the slot we can jam it into. So I'll hit add. There we go. So now you see, here's the one for version A, temperature A, and down here is for temperature B. So we're gonna see that the gauges down the road, the outside air temperature is gonna be mapped to this air temperature or environment slash air temperature. And then the interior temperature sensor is gonna be mapped to environment slash track temperature, okay? All right, great. So we just need this last one here for the Fahrenheit version of temperature B. So let's go ahead and hit plus again. And now this is now going to be what do we want? Temperature, I think, uh, B, 
be uh, what I was trying to do. Temperature B in Fahrenheit. This guy, right? And that is going to be mapped again to environment track temperature in Fahrenheit. There we go. Okay, so now here's the A version and here's the B version. And as you can see, everything looks reasonable. Okay, so there we go. I think we have the two temperature sensors read in. Let's move on to how about the number of satellites. All right, so to do the number of satellites, it's pretty much a very similar uh, format. So let's go ahead and come here to our calculator. We'll add a new calculator first. We'll grab a linear interpolator so we can just get the number of satellites in. And now the input value is going to be num satellites, right? This is this column that we want from the data. And the output value, um, again, we can call this whatever we want. Um, how about number satellite, or I guess we called it num satellites underscore i for interpolated and we'll hit OK. And again, that should drop this down here at the bottom. Just for your consistency, I think we like to have all these linear interpolators as sort of the first lines of code um, here. So let me move this up, 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 up. We've we got to keep going up, up, up. We're going to keep moving this all the way up to, yeah, that's perfect, right? So here's temperature A, B, and then number of satellites, okay? So in fact, I think that's all we need to do. We don't actually need to do any conversions, right? Because this is just an integer value. So we can move right over here to the column mappings and add a column mapping and basically pull that interpolated value of the satellites here. And we will map that to, um, I can't remember where that was. Was that in environment? I know there's a, no, maybe it's positional. Um, yeah, here we go, satellite count. There we go. That should work. So that now we can drive gauges using the satellite count. That satellite count is going to be driven by this column in the data as it's interpolated. So great, we're trucking. Okay, now let's turn our attention now to this vertical speed item. Okay, so vertical speed. Again, if you remember, we talked about this earlier. If you come over to the calculators, you notice um, there is already a vertical speed calculation being done right here raw vertical speed. So actually, the most efficient thing to do would be to basically strike this line of code where they're basically trying to calculate the vertical speed using a finite difference system where they look at a difference in altitude and a difference in time. But really, instead of calculating that here, I just want to read this from the data file. So really, what we want to do is replace this line with a linear interpolator, which will basically pull off the data out of the file and create this variable called raw vertical speed ms, right? So I tell you what, let's keep this here for now. Let's go ahead and add a new calculator and we'll make this one a linear interpolator like that, okay? And now the input value for this is going to be, uh, what do we call this thing over here? Vertical speed ms. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Let's look for where is that? Here we go, vertical speed ms, okay? And now the output value of this is this string right here, raw space, vertical space, speed space, brace, m slash s, n brace, right? So let's just copy that here, raw vertical speed, m slash s, like that. Okay, so now we hit okay, and now, you know what? That dropped it down here at the bottom. Let's move this up right next to the other one. I'm trying to remember where was the... Uh where was that raw speed? Uh, there it is, it's, we're almost there. Right here, okay? Okay, so now look at this. This is the old line of code that was getting us this variable called raw vertical speed. Here's our new line that says basically read it in from the file. So we basically wanna blow this line away and get rid of it. So I'm gonna hit delete on that. And now we have the raw vertical speed read in and everything down below should still remain the same. So this is how we can do a little bit of a, you know, software surgery here and just splice in our new source of data for raw vertical speed. And now all this other stuff like this next line of the averaging calculator, this should still work because it should be defined. Um, okay, so let's hit apply. And I think, is that actually, I think that, is that, yeah, here it is. It is available over here, all right? Um, yep, so all of this stuff is still available. Great, so I think we are pretty much um, in business. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so I think we've got most of this set up. So let's go ahead and hit OK. 
All right, so now here comes the moment of truth where we can try to add that data file. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign here and here's our little dialogue. So let me go ahead and browse to that. Um, yep, so here is our CSV file that we were looking at. So let's go ahead and open that. And now what we need to do, oh, excuse me, is now we need to choose a data profile. So we are gonna use the one we just created, right? So that was this one, this LUM GPS logger. And now what it should hopefully do is just open up that CSV file and run through all of those calculations and all those mappings that we have just set up. And let's go ahead and click on add. And wow, look at that. It looks like it kind of works. So we come here to the synchronization pane. Look at this. We've got the data and it looks like it is being read in. Now, the, that being said, what we should check is, let's add some gauges that leverage some of those new tools that we, uh, and, and those new signals that we added. So let, let's clean this up a little bit. We don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. Um, and in fact, uh, let's use a, maybe like a different version of this might be uh, more helpful. But uh, tell you what, let's, yeah, yeah, tell you what, let, let's delete this speed tracker. I think in our previous video where we were talking about gauges, uh, I actually made a better version of a speed tracker. So let's go ahead and get rid of this one. We don't want the GoPro version. Um, okay, so let's save our project. Okay, now let's come here to our gauge toolbox and let's do something like, how about those two temperatures? That's the first thing I would, we, would definitely show if this is working, if we were reading those two temperatures incorrectly. So let's get a thermometer in Fahrenheit. So let's get this one right here, copy this over to the project, okay? Let's make this one the outside air temperature. So what we can do is let's edit this, uh, this one right here. So I'll double click on it to edit it, bring this up, okay? Uh, now, currently, this thing is being driven by, uh, yeah, the air temperature in Fahrenheit, which I think it should have worked. So this should probably work right away. So let's go ahead and close this. And in fact, what we should maybe do is let's come here to our little data synchronization and remove this. Aha, look at this, right? As you move this, this totally looks like it's working, right? If we, if we make this a little bit bigger so you can see this a little easier, right? Um, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Yep. That looks like it's wor it's working right. It's negative. What is it? Thirty degrees Fahrenheit. I think that lined up with some of the MATLAB data. So in fact, let me pull up the MATLAB again just so we can look at this. Um, let me go ahead and run the MATLAB just so we can verify that this all is sort of lining up. All right. Yep. Here we go. Yes. So indeed. We do expect, let's say open up Dashware and let me put this other plot right next to it so we can kind of see them together, right? At certain portions of the flight, look at this, this blue line got down to negative 30s, right? Neg so yeah, this is totally working, right? We are reading this information in on this uh, gauge. Okay, now what we want to do is let's also get how about the... Um, the the outside uh, the interior air temperature right so let's come here back to our gauge toolbox let's grab another one of these thermometers in Fahrenheit and copy it over okay now what's interesting about this is this one we want to drive with the other signal so that it reads the interior temperature right so this is actually like another instance of that same thermometer and again you can see that by if I save this project let me go ahead and save the project real fast. And let me open up the project directory just so we can see. Um, yep, here, gauges, right? Now there are two of these thermometer Fs. So this thermometer F was this one, right? Which was our inside. And now thermometer F1 is the second instance of it, which is over here. So over here, what I want to do is I want to modify this. So if I double click this one, I don't want to drive this with the air temperature any longer. So you remember in the data profile, we set it up so temperature sensor B was actually mapped to another input. So I'm gonna click on this modify. And what we are gonna to want to do is, it's not the air temperature, it is the, the track temperature. Isn't that how we had set this up? So now if I hit okay here, and I will save this gauge and then close, so now um, what we should have is two separate temperatures. Oh, nope, what happened? They are the same, right? If you look at those, those are still going the same. What did I mess up here? 
All right, so I, I'm not sure what ended up happening. There was just been, must have been some small glitch. Um, to fix this, all I ended up doing was uh, deleting this data file and then re-adding the data file again. Um, I don't know if this was just some glitch here, but again, let's just re-add the data file using the uh, GPS logger uh, data profile add. Yeah, and now, this is working, right? So look at the two temperatures, they are different, right? So yeah, this one on the left is the interior inside temperature. This is the, uh, no, sorry, other way around. This is exterior temperature, interior temperature. And as you can see, they are pretty different, right? Um, so yeah, this is working great. So the temperatures are working. Let's keep going. Um, what else did we modify? We also added, I think, the uh, the number of satellites, right? So let's grab ourselves. I think there's a satellite number. Here it is, sat count. Let's copy this over and make this a little bit smaller. And this should pretty much, I think, work right out of the box because I think this is looking for, yep, satellite count, right? So this gauge should already be keyed up to listen for the signal. So again, yeah, if you scroll through this, yep, look at that, 11 satellites now. Yep, this is looking good. And then here around burst, I think we should see this go down to like no satellites somewhere. There we go, zero satellites, right? That's where we started tumbling and losing signal. So, yep, that is hooked up correctly. Um, now, how about the uh, the vertical speed? So let's go ahead and add a couple more um, gauges to this. Uh, what might be interesting? Um, oh, I think we had, uh, did I copy those over to my gauge toolbox? Yes, here we go. Yeah, the speed and the altitude charts. Yeah, so let's go ahead, let's copy an altitude chart over. This might be interesting to look at. Um, in fact, though, I don't know, do we need this? Oh, yeah, because the scaling, I think, is a little bit off on this. So, you know what, let's, um, maybe what we should do is we should auto-scale this axis, right? So, so we can see the total altitude profile. So let me go ahead and let's modify this one. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so this chart here, let's modify this. I'm um, sorry, I, I know this is not exactly related to the um, discussion we were having earlier, but I think this is okay. Okay, here we go. Auto scale that chart x axis. Let's also auto scale the little dot as well. So let's auto scale this one. Okay. Okay, so this looks a little bit nicer. Okay, great. There we can see our entire altitude profile as we go through the mission. Yep, it's just climbing, 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 pop, and then, yep, tumble and then we're descending like a stone, right? So uh, let's also tack on our current altitude. So I think I, I made myself a gauge for that earlier in our previous video, this current altitude gauge. So let's move that over. We can maybe stick that right there so we can read the current altitude as we're going through the mission. Yep, this is looking good. Okay, all right, so now let's get the, um, the vertical speed. Uh, so I think what we probably want to do is uh, let's clone one of these current altitude or current speed. Let's clone this one. Let's let's make this a new gauge. So I'm going to clone this, and I'm going to say this is current vertical speed. How about? And let's do this in um, I think in feet per minute. Oops, feet per minute. I think is what one of the the, the selections were. So let's do that. Okay, so current vertical speed, let's go ahead and edit this gauge. We want to now drive this with a vertical speed, right? Here we go, vertical speed, and here we go, feet per minute, okay? There we go, okay, save this gauge, and that should be good. Where is it, current vertical speed? Okay, let's put this over, okay. And you know what, maybe we should have a vertical speed gauge that looks like this as well so we can read that. So let's clone ourselves one of the, where was it? Here, the, the altitude one. Let's clone this one. Let's go ahead and clone that one. And we will call this a GoPro uh, vertical speed chart. And I guess this one is the version that auto tracks the x-axis. 
So um, we can keep the automatic x-axis tracking version here in the map. That's not a pro or excuse me in the gauge toolbox. That's not a problem. So let's now instantiate one version of that over here into our project and then let's change the one that's in our project and we will now take off the auto scaling on the X axis. We will put the auto scaling back on. So oh, sorry, I think I might have said that backwards, but okay, let's get that and then this one as well we need to auto scale the x again uh here okay oh and we need to change the input right so it's not uh, we, i don't want the altitude i want the velocity in vertical speed in feet per minute okay like such and then uh oh shucks do i have to modify this as well what is this one keying off of Ver nope, that is vertical speed. Okay, so that, I think that will update later. Um, oh, this text, this is not an altitude tracker anymore. This is now a uh, vertical speed tracker. Okay, hit okay. And then let's save this gauge and let's close it. And then, whoops, that did not work. <laughs> Why did that one not work? That looks like it's still keying off the altitude. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this again. This might be one of these, these glitches where maybe we need to close and reopen. Yeah, because this looks like it is the vertical speed. Oh, I know one thing we need to modify is the chart value, or sorry, the Y label. This should not be, um, where was this here? Da, 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 y auto scale. Okay, so here no, it is not feet. It's uh, feet per minute. Whoops, feet per minute. There. Okay, and then we need to modify this one as well to keep everything consistent. This should also be feet per minute. And the y. -axis. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I am a little bit confused why that did not update. Tell you what, let's do this. Let's cl let's save the project. Let's close the project. Let's reopen the project <laughs> and just see if that does any better. Nope. Uh, all right. I, I don't know if I'm going to have to do this again. Let's try our little trick here of um, deleting this data and then re-adding the data. Notice this thing has some nuances with it there we go <laughs> see now i don't know apparently you have to i think delete and re-add maybe that's the safest way to do it but okay now we got the vertical speed tracker and again this is exactly like we saw in the matlab data um where the vertical speed where was it right here yep this thing is uh has odd values at these these um when the when the gps dropped out so really what we do want to do is we want to zoom in to this region so it looks a little bit more reasonable right um so uh although the only problem here is i got this in feet per second and we need to go here to feet per minute um, so there's going to be a little bit of guesswork uh, with this, but I think we I think we can figure this out. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, what we're going to want to do then is let's actually take off the automatic y-axis scaling, and let's make this go from um, g. What should this be in positive feet per minute? I don't know. Uh, what was it earlier? Uh, Oh, okay, no, here's the problem. I, I can't read. You gotta put the minimum number first. So this is minus 4,000 minimum, and then positive 1,200 like this. That will flip this around a little. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, there we go, that. And then let me also fix this one. Um, sorry for that, I was just going too fast. Minus 4,000, 4, it's got this funny way of not letting you input numbers sometimes. Okay, and then 1,200 feet per minute. Okay, there we go. Now this gauge looks a lot better. There we go. Okay, now hopefully, hopefully this starts to line up. Um, like, yes, that looks better, right? So now this is all looking better. Okay. Now I think we're in business, right? So we've got most of our stuff, all of our 
things seem to be working. Let's just rearrange this. Maybe I'll put the I'll put the GPS track over here. Let's see if we can put maybe this guy over here. Let's put the altitude tracker also kind of over here. Hopefully we can line these up as much as possible. Yeah, there we go. This is looking really good now. Okay, so now this gives us some pretty good situational awareness of what's going on during the launch. So tell you what, let's go ahead, um, save this. Oh, actually, I guess what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is synced up. So tell you what, let's let me play the video forward till about when we actually do the launch. That's a good, easy indication. Um, Okay, so that's right when the balloon takes off, so that's when we should see this thing go flying. The speed should go up, the vertical speed should go up, so that is somewhere around here. So let me go ahead and see if we can find... Oop, there it is. Uh, okay, let me see. It's somewhere around here. Um, I just got to watch this for a second until what, for that vertical speed to kind of increase. Oops, I, th I think we got it. There we go. Okay, okay. I think that matches, so let's go ahead and click sync with video. All right, I think this is going to work now. Let me back this up a skosh, and we'll see if this all looks pretty reasonable. Yep. All right, we're taking off. Okay, great. Okay, so then this looks good. Let's save this project, and then let's go ahead and render this video and take a look at what it actually uh, looks like. Okay, so here's the final video, and I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear the kids count down right before they launch the balloon. And we're away! So, as you can see, everything is working nicely, and we've successfully imported data from a custom data source into Dashware, and then used it to drive all of these various gauges. As you saw, the process wasn't too bad, uh, especially if you simply modify an existing data profile to match your application. Now, I find it somewhat mesmerizing to watch this balloon ascend, especially with all the gauges and the readouts overlaid on top. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the full ascent video in the description of this video, or you can reach it by simply clicking on the card that should have just appeared in the upper right corner. So, with all that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I hope you'll also consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really helps me continue making these videos. And also, please leave a comment and let me know if this video was helpful or if there are topics that you'd like me to cover in the future. Another way you can support the channel is via Patreon, and the nice thing about this option is that 100% of the proceeds that the channel receives via Patreon will be directed towards science, engineering, and adventures for K-12 kids and young adults. In fact, this high-altitude weather balloon launch that you're watching right here was actually funded entirely by Patreon donations from generous supporters. I'll leave a link to the Patreon page in the description of this video as well. Alternatively, if you just want to leave a one-time donation, feel free to try out the thanks button that is underneath this video. And uh, speaking of the future, remember the new videos come out every Monday, so I hope you'll join me at one of these future discussions and we can all learn something new together. So until next time, I think I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.